just a soft piano music, please. Sure. Just stay in the place of worship. You're right there in the throne room. room. You're right in front of your Heavenly Father. Just look up. Look up to Him. Can you see yourself standing there? It's an audience of one. All you want to do right now, you just want to keep on worshiping, dancing before your God. And He's all for you. He's all for you. Raise up your voices. Sing to him. Let Holy Spirit sing through you. Join in with the chorus of angels. Sing to him, family. Let your own song arise. Pick up that heavenly frequency, the sound of worship. Worship your mighty King. Worship. Shonea porea porea porea, enara korea porea sorea korea ta. Ere bari a tore a tore a pore a tare a ku O wa pore a po O we worship your father Shina ra pore a tere a tore a kore a fa E pari a tore a tore a kore a sa Worship you, Lord. Shura da da pura to ne. Ore a to de a to de a to de a to de a do ne. A do ne. Ora pura a so de a co. Dane da to ne a to de a to de to do. Let it rise, family. Let it rise from your heart. Let it rise. Don't be spectators. Worship. Worship. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. We bring our very best, Lord. Ora pataria puture. Ora paria susuraria ture. Kuture, kuture. You know that your faith works by love. Ora patatataria tura kataria sura. Receive his love. Receive a fresh, a fresh touch of your father. A fresh touch of what he is. He is love. He is love. He is love. Ora paria sura toture ature 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 ature. You know that the more you know how much he loves you. The more you know that, the more it's real to you, the more your faith is in operation because faith works by love. Faith works by love. So if you want to do anything, if you want to believe anything, you need to engage your faith and that is working when you know that he loves you, that he has given everything. The most precious he had, he gave it. He gave it, he did not hold back. He did not hold out on you and he will not do that now. He won't. He won't. Refresh yourself. Know that he loves you with an everlasting love.
is an everlasting love. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He is good and he is only good. God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. No darkness. No darkness. Only light. Only goodness. Only kindness. It might be difficult for some of us. We have experienced things in our lives. We had people in our lives that showed us right the opposite. But that's what we are wired for. We are wired for His love. We are wired to receive His love. And that it would drive us so that we can walk by faith, family. We thank you, Papa. We thank you, Papa. That we do not have to be anyone or anything before you. You know us full well. You know our hearts. You know who we are. And that's where you're looking. That's where you're looking. Thank you, Lord, that you show us as your temple, that you live in us. That's a great creator, God, God Almighty, who choose us to come and live in us, to dwell in us. Oh, Lord. We marvel, Lord. We marvel at your goodness. We marvel at you, Lord. Your love for us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, when you know that, how much he loved you, truly know that in your heart, when you don't have any doubt that he would ever do anything else but love you and do things that are good for you, that he has good plans for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you but to give you a hope in the future. Once you arrive in that place that you truly can know that, it will be so easy for you to receive whatever you need. If it's healing, if it's finance, if it's prosperity in your relationships, in your marriage, whatever it is, once you're persuaded that there's nothing else but love that comes from your Heavenly Father, it will just flow, for faith works by love. Family, I believe that there's some here that have a word that you might have received during worship. Something that the Lord has spoken to you that you want to share and minister to our family here. Come forward. If that's you, come forward and minister to us. Thank you, worship team. Awesome job. What you're saying about love is just, it's just something that fills you just to the full. And then God gave me the word that being confident of this, that he who begins a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not us, but just by being near him and just by being in his love. We will come to that place with him. Yeah, he works in us. He works in us. Amen. While we were praising and worshipping, um, 
the Lord reminded me of uh, something that Jules and I witnessed the, uh, a couple of weeks ago. We were walking along the beach, and um, it was a lovely dog beach, and there were these two really big shaggy dogs past, a really big, old, like, English sheep dog, and they were prancing around. They were, they were two brothers, and they were going out into the water, and because it was such a hot day, they were just lying down in the water in about so much water, and the waves were coming in and just completely covering them and they'd get up and their eyes were just dazzled and the Holy Spirit was reminding me that that he just is coming like a flood he's coming like a wave and he's there to refresh and to rejuvenate and to excite us and we are alive he like these dogs that came out of the water they were (gasps) they were alive and they shook themselves off and he said and that's what it's going to be like I'm going to come in and I'm just going to just completely overtake you like a big wave, and it's going to ignite something in you. And I think that's something for this church. Glory to God. So when um, Verena was speaking, um, I felt like the Lord was showing, was talking to me. You know, in James 1, there is a man who is uncertain and unstable in all of his ways. And I felt like God was saying, there may be a man or a woman someone who should have been stable and certain in your life and perhaps they weren't and um, the father wants you to know that you know if you continue on through James it talks about how every perfect um, and good gift comes down from the father above in whom there is no variableness neither shadow of turning your father doesn't flip he doesn't flop your father God is stable and certain and sure and you can depend on him Good word, Debbie. Thank you. I hand to Pastor Les. Amen. I got a, a word as well and um, that I'll, I'll share. Uh, I, I just, I can see there's someone um, and you're facing a choice in the road. It's going in two different directions. One, one way looks really simple and easy and the other way looks really, really difficult. And, um, and the Lord's saying, you need to pick that one that looks difficult. And the scripture that came to my mind is, it says, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. And so that, that there's one way and it looks really simple and easy, uh, but it's leading to destruction. And, uh, and, and then Jesus goes on, he says, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. And so I believe that the Lord is, uh, there's someone here, and you're, face, you're, you're being faced with a decision, and it seems like one way seems really simple and easy, uh, and the other way looks really, really difficult, and the Lord is saying, you're making the wrong choice. You need, you need to go down that narrow way. And so um, I just wanted to share that. Praise the Lord. Well, welcome to our Faith Conference, 2024 Faith Conference. Hallelujah. We're going to have a great weekend. I really want to encourage you to open yourself up and receive from the Lord. Don't just receive tonight. Receive every session. Every session. You know, you you can go as a result of this weekend feeling like, man, I'm full. I feel like a hard-boiled egg. You know, you could be so full in the Spirit. And so, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. You can receive tonight, tomorrow. Uh, all through the day, you can receive in the evening, you can receive in every session. God has something for you and, and for me. Amen. I just want to put um, the program up just to uh, give you an idea of what's happening. Andrew, if you could just put that up. Just, um, it's pretty simple. Our evening sessions are at 7 p.m. and the, the morning sessions are at 9.30 if, you, if you're visiting with us, welcome to Transformers Christian Church. And my name is Pastor Les Gomes. But if you're visiting from another church, we want you to be faithful to your church. If there's no conflict, you're welcome to come along to any of the sessions. Um, but if, uh, if there's something that's happening at your uh, home church that conflicts with any of those, then we want to encourage you. We're not interested in taking anybody else's sheep. We're all on the same team. And so we want to encourage you, you be faithful to where God has planted you. Do I hear an amen? amen. I'm going to... Um, uh, I'm going to share something. Uh, we're going to receive an offering, and um, uh, I want to uh, share something with you just before we do. And if you have your Bibles, I want you to look at First Kings chapter ten. 
I'm going to, uh, each night we'll take up an offering. Um, and um, I want to share, uh, I'll be sharing w- before the offerings. And I'm going to share a few things over the consecutive nights about uh, some, of the, some of the most profound things that uh, the Lord has shown me regarding prosperity and um, uh, uh, and starting tonight I, I, I want to share that so just to give you a little bit of an idea you know uh, for a long time I lived from fortnight to fortnight and it just felt like the fortnight was longer than my money lasted it never seemed to be enough money to be able to get through and any time that I was able to save a little bit of money Along would come the rego, or along would come an electricity bill that was higher than, well, even if it was a normal bill, it would just slug me. And it just seemed like I was just living to survive. And um, I I could see that, that it was God's will for me to prosper in the scriptures, but I wasn't experiencing it. And and um, I remember I went to the Lord uh, probably about 15 years ago, and I said, you know, I, I know I'm missing something. You're You're never wrong. And I can see it in your word, but I'm not seeing it in my life. So I'm going to reset my thinking and I'm asking you, please show me where I'm getting this wrong. And so over the next few nights, I'm going to share some of the specific things that he showed me that I needed to make a correction. And my life is very different now to what it was 15 years ago. I don't live fortnight to fortnight. I have money. I don't work for money, in fact. You know, like what Pastor Verena and I get from this church is not enough for anybody, but we're not dependent on, we're not dependent on your giving. And so let me just say this for, for those of you visiting, you're not under any compulsion to give. God will love you if you never give an offering. The reason I'm sharing is because I'm excited about giving because of what I've found in the Word and I've found that it works in my life and it'll work in your life as well. But if you can't see that, then just relax, okay, because God's not stressed about it. We're not stressed about it. I'm not dependent on your giving. I'm free and so is my wife and we live really well. Money, we don't work for money. Money works for us now and it's just an awesome place to be. And so um, I want to share some some things with you so tonight the first thing I want to share is um, prosperity is actually God's idea and I wasn't sure about that you know like when I came to that crossroads about 15 years ago and I thought am I missing this you know I think I'm seeing it in your word but maybe I'm I'm, maybe I'm too hopeful here God please just put me out of my misery if I'm if I'm trying to read too much in the scriptures regarding prospering then please correct me I, I don't want to constantly be faced with heartache after heartache disappointment after disappointment believing and believing and nothing's coming and nothing's happening and the one of the first things that he showed me was that prosperity is actually his idea you know God does things with such a lavish lifestyle doesn't he um in everything if you look at the life of Jesus um he was lavish in what he did I mean he didn't have property because his mission was really to give his life away and but like if you look when when he was being crucified they were gambling for his clothes now if they were rags why are they going to gamble for it this must have been like the louis vuitton of the day you know like whatever this was that he was wearing was worth something that the soldier said no we're not going to rip this up let's gamble and the winner takes all and that's what they i mean when he came into jerusalem he had a donkey that had never been ridden if you do a scripture on donkeys you will see that that was the vehicle on which kings and princes and wealthy people rode and this wasn't just an ordinary donkey the scripture maze makes a point saying this was a donkey that was never ridden a colt that was never sat on before so jesus entered jerusalem in you know in in style and uh, and god is just like that and if you, are you at First Kings 10 yet? Let me um, show you something here. It says, each year, in uh, verse 14, each year Solomon received, I'm reading from the New Living Translation, each year Solomon received about 25 tons of gold. All right. By my calculations, it was actually um, a little bit less than that. I, my, I calculate it um, as 22 tons of gold. It, it's translating from, you know, the uh, talents into... Um, uh, our thing today but 20 22 tons is still is still uh, plenty of gold hey that's um that's around about uh, you know if you look at gold it's around about three and a half thousand dollars australian 
an ounce. So 22 tons a year was 2.48 billion per year each year coming in. And um, uh, it says this did not, in verse 15, this did not include the additional revenue he received from merchants and traders, all the kings of Arabia and the governors of the land. King Solomon made 200 large shields of hammered gold, each weighing more than 15 pounds. Each shield weighed as much as a heavy bowling ball. That's, that's, that's three quarters of a million dollars per shield in gold. And he had 200 of them. That's 76 million bucks just in those 200 shields. Verse 17, he also made 300 smaller shields of hammered gold, each weighing nearly four pounds. Each one there, weighed two, that was $200,000 worth of gold in each one of the smaller shields. Oh, that's just one of my smaller ones. <laughs> Let me show you one of my bigger ones, you know, over here. And there were 300, that was $61 million worth of smaller shields that he had. It says, uh, the king placed these shields in the palace of the forest of Lebanon. That was his personal palace. That wasn't the temple. That's his joint. Verse 18, then the king made a huge throne decorated with ivory and overlaid with fine gold. The throne had six steps and a rounded back. There were armrests on both sides of the seat and the figure of a lion stood on each side of the throne. There were also 12 other lions, one standing on each end of the six steps. No other throne in all the world could be compared with it. All of King Solomon's drinking cups were solid gold, as were all the utensils in the palace of the forest of Lebanon. They were not made of silver, for silver was considered worthless in Solomon's day. And it goes on. In fact, it's, if you're interested, you, I would encourage you to read it. It's just amazing talking about this man's wealth. And what was happening to him. You know what I don't read in there? Is that there was not a single point in that story where God stepped in and said, Hey, enough Solomon. Now this is just too much. <laughs> not one time. You know, like all these things he's doing. He's thinking, I'm going to build a throne made of ivory. I'm going to coat it in gold. Well, you can't see the ivory if you're going to coat it in gold. I mean, you could make it out of wood. No one would know. Why didn't God just step in and say, Solomon, I mean, this is just a bit of an overkill, mate. Think about the poor. But yet never, never once did God say, enough is enough. You shouldn't be spending all of this money to do up your palace like that. It's too extravagant. Do you know why God didn't say that? Because extravagance was his idea. That's the point that I'm making. The first thing God spoke to me is prosperity is his idea. If you go back seven chapters earlier in 1 Kings chapter 3, God actually says to Solomon, ask what you want, I'll give it to you. And Solomon said, God, please give me wisdom that I can be a good leader. And God said, you know, you could have asked for riches, you could have asked for life, you could have asked for anything, but you asked for wisdom. And he said, I'm so blessed that you would ask for that. I'm going to give you wisdom, but I'm going to give you the whole lot. The whole showcase is yours. You're going to have not only wisdom, but you're going to have wealth. You're going to have honor. You're going to have long life if you follow me, Solomon. So for Solomon to be rich was God's idea. God said to him seven chapters before he built the palace, I'm going to make you so rich. I'm going to make you wealthy. Prosperity is God's idea. If you go, you know, when we get to heaven, we're going to see God's place. His fences are encrusted with jewels. Well, he doesn't have fences, they're walls, you know. But like most people build walls out of brick. Some people might use concrete. Some people might use stone. But God, he puts jewels in his walls. He uses, he uses gold for concrete. Man, it's like that story that I heard about the pastor and he he got into heaven and he had a big bag of gold with him. And the angel said, what are you doing with that? And the pastor said, well, I'm not leaving it back. And he said, but we just use that for concrete. <laughs> Prosperity is God's idea. He wants you and I to prosper. He wants to bless you beyond what you could ever do in your own strength. You don't have to have a degree. You don't have to have connections in high society you don't have to be born on the right side of the freeway or the other side of the train tracks you don't have to, it's it's not dependent on any of that 
I, you know, I, I got a mate who made, uh, he had a portfolio, a multi-million dollar real estate portfolio, and he did it on a pension. It's not dependent on your income or who's paying you. It's just dependent on your relationship with God. And that was the first thing that the Lord showed me. Hey, let's stand up. I'm just going to pray. And if you would like to give, could we get someone out? The, oh, thank you, Vicky. If you would like to give, um, uh, then you're welcome to praise the Lord. Lord, we just want to thank you that uh, for you to bless and to increase is, is your idea. We're so delighted to be a part of your ideas. We're so delighted to partner with you. We're so delighted that we get to walk with you and hear from you and fellowship with you. Lord, as we give, we give with a thankful heart, a grateful heart. We recognize you are our source. You're the one that increases us. And so we give out of that thankful place in Jesus' name. Amen. Come forward and give if you would like to. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, isn't it, isn't it great to have Ben back visiting with us? Hallelujah. Ben's, ben has been serving in the, arm, in the Defense Force um, uh, up in uh, Northern Territory, and he's been, uh, you're part of the Army officially, aren't you? But serving on a naval vessel. The Navy can't do what he needs to do, hey. When it's time for Ben to act, he says, okay, girls, sit down, let me take... Let me take care of this. Hallelujah. No, we've missed you, Ben, and we're so grateful. You know, he has flown specifically for our conference. He wanted to, he wanted to be here. He applied for leave, and, uh, and we're so blessed to have you, Ben. Hey, the burgers are on me tomorrow. <laughs> Praise God. Hey, why don't you stand up, go and high-five someone and tell them you are destined to win.
is going to be speaking uh, for most of the conference. And then tomorrow, Lindy's going to be sharing with us as well. And we are really looking forward. Um, we so enjoyed um, your ministry, Failing. And Lindy, we love your ministry every year. And uh, let's stand up and honor the Word of God and the woman of God, Failing Sparks. Thank you, thank you. Wow, praise the Lord. I'm so excited about being here. And can you feel the presence of God? Oh, my goodness. Uh, and and uh, Pastor Les, I was like, just keep preaching that stuff. It's like, you should, we could have just taken, we could have just had an altar call right there. <laughs> that was outstanding. I was waiting to hear more. <laughs> and all that research, man, alive. Praise the Lord. In fact, I really felt when you were speaking, there was such a, an anointing to break poverty off people's lives and to break glass ceilings. And so right now, just because, because of faith and what was released when you shared, I, I just felt people's faith rising in the whole room. And so if you need a breakthrough in your finances, if you need a glass ceiling, if you've had a poverty mentality you know, that's generational. I believe God wants to break that tonight in this atmosphere of faith. So, Father God, right now, we thank you today that that prosperity is your idea. What a great uh, truth. So, God, we just thank you tonight that you're a good, good Father. And you're no respecter of persons. And so, Father God, right now, I take authority over every spirit of poverty, over every generational curse. And we say poverty is under the curse. And Jesus, you came and you became poor that we might be rich, that we might prosper. And you said, beloved, I desire that you prosper and be in hell. So tonight, oh God, we cut off the glass ceiling. We cut off poverty mentality. We cut off poverty thinking. And we say, tonight, oh God, we reach out and thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your prosperity. Thank you for the abundance of God that you are, you are, uh, you're glorified in the prosperity of your people. So, Lord, we just thank you tonight. And we reach out with faith to receive all that you have for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Well, it's wonderful to be back here. And uh, that worship was outstanding. It was world class. It was just wonderful. I just want to thank the musicians. It just was just brilliant. So thank you. Just, just the presence of God and... And uh, just great to be back with Pastor Les and Pastor Verena. And um, just a joy to call you my friends, you know, really, really precious friends. And just love it when we get together and have coffee and, and get to chat and things like that. So um, I'm excited about this weekend and also being here with Pastor Lindy, um, a dynamic duo. We get to ride again together. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, ex I'm really excited about what you're going to share tomorrow and believe in God for breakthrough for some things that you share. So, um, And also to see so many beautiful people that I recognise from last year. It's just brilliant to be asked back and um, always a shock people ask me back. But <laughs> So thank you. And uh, actually, I, um, I have my brother here, my physical brother, uh, Chris and his wife Lisa, and uh, yay! <laughs> and and uh, and so often when I'm doing if I'm doing a prophetic training school or seminar, um, Chris and Lisa will come along and minister and and uh, just encourage people. So I said to them, "Look, I'm going to this fabulous church on the weekend, and uh, you're just going to love Pastor Les and Verena. And uh, why don't you come out and, and make it more of a ministry night tonight?" And so I want to share a word God's given me, but I really felt, um, you know, just to, uh, to, as an extra flow of encouragement for tonight, for the very outset of the conference, I've asked these guys to come along and we're just going to pray for you and just uh, and release uh, God's anointing. And um, also, if, if we could have a keyboard, just a, just a chord progression background, just, uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> everybody salute Ben. Is <laughs> awesome having Ben here, and I'm going to ask my brother Chris and his wife Lisa if you'd like to come, and um, and also um, if these guys are praying for people, um, maybe if we could have a couple of catches. Yeah, yeah. 
Hey, um, just a, a, a quick thing. We, we've spoken with Faelene about this. Have your phone um, uh, ready to record. Like um, if, if you get called out or you come out to receive a word, have your phone so you can record it. That way you can listen back uh, to it, okay? Oh, praise God. Thanks, Pastor Les, because um, the other thing that reminds me too is to let you know that, you know, um, you know, the gifts of the Spirit are for the church and that's what we want to flow in. And, um, and prophecy is not a done deal. It's an invitation to become. And the Bible says many are called, few are chosen, not because God's selected, but few choose to be chosen. Because when we get a prophetic word or we have an understanding of God's calling, there is a process there's a journey of being faithful, faithful in the house of God and, um, and cooperating and working with the oversight, the pastors and leaders God puts around about us to um, help us to grow and develop into that gifting. So it's an invitation to become. And often we're in chapter 3 and God's prophesying about chapter 33. Um, and so I just wanted to say that uh, at the outset so when we get a prophetic word, the Bible says it needs to be mixed with faith and uh, to trust that God's able to bring it to pass. We don't have to manipulate anything, but we do have to stay faithful in a place of teachability and a, uh, in a process where that, that word can be outworked. The Bible says he who isolates himself seeks his own. So we can have a ton of prophecies, but if we're cranky with the church and we're out there doing our own thing, you can forget about that stuff. <laughs> Because it's, it, it's only in the relationship of church and the house of God do these things get truly outworked. Amen? Uh, otherwise, we're just lone rangers. And lone rangers always end up falling off their horses. So, <laughs> um, so I just want to pray for some people from the outset. I felt there was someone here and has a problem with your feet. And um, also someone... With a toe, it's either an ingrown toenail or something that's very painful condition. Who are those people? Is that you, Dal? Do you want to come? Is it both feet? Just this foot. Okay. Okay, I'm going to pray for it. Father, I just thank you right now. What you reveal, you heal. And in the name of Jesus, I take authority over this infirmity right now. And in Jesus' name, I say, be healed in the name of Jesus right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. The power of God is present to heal tonight. Thank you, God. Every bit whole, every bit whole, every bit whole in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, I should have actually introduced Chris and Lisa a little bit better. Um, when, when I got saved, I was the first person in my family saved. My brother was still a heathen. <laughs> Five of us brothers and sisters. And so I'd bowl him up when he'd come home after a big night of drinking. <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, so Chris, Chris got saved eventually. Yep. And um, so we worked in the same church and fellowshiped in the same church for quite a while. So... Um, I might just get you to say hello. Hold on for a second, we're going to pray for you. It's really great to be here tonight. And, um, you know, I can just really feel the intensity of the heart, especially during the worship. What a great worship team. Uh, Lisa and I have a small church up at Narangba. So can I see all the worship team <laughs> after the meeting? There's a bus waiting. Sorry. Um, but we've just spent... Um, 14 years uh, in a church down in Coffs Harbour and we come up here for a rest and after four months ended up in another church so we didn't have a rest <laughs> but it's really great to be here and um, love my sister Faileen and being with her and uh, just really good to uh, be able to minister here. Did you want to say anything? I'm his wife. <laughs> No, no, I just say, obviously, I'm his wife, and I'm Lisa, and yeah, we've been ministering for many years together as pastors, and it's just a real honour. I often think when I come to a different church, you know, we're all sisters and brothers. If we were overseas, in America, anywhere, 
our spirit inside of us is the sp same spirit in you. So it's lovely to meet you all. And I'm just praying this is going to be such a special night, that you're going to be so blessed. And those breakthroughs are going to happen. That I see there's people that have really cried out to God. And God sees your hearts tonight. So, yeah, be blessed. Father, I thank you that what you reveal, you heal. I take authority over the pain, the distress, the suffering right now. And I rebuke infirmity. I rebuke pain, discomfort in the bones, into every area. I release the healing gift of God. I say be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I just thank you for this precious woman. The Lord says, know that your heart is coming to a new level of expansion. And I'm enlarging your voice over the enemy. I'm enlarging uh, even that to intimacy, even that ability to hear my voice, even that ability to hear my voice saying behind you, this is the way, walk you in it. You're going to know not only the whispers, but you're going to know the, the, the loving embrace of the Father God, for it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And yes, even as was spoken of in finances tonight, I desire that you prosper, even in new realms, even in new levels, for God says, know this day that I'm taking you from level to level, strength to strength and glory to glory in a new way, says the Lord your God. Amen. Amen. God bless you, darling. We'd just like to pray. Um, is it Francis? Is it Francis? Francis and your wife. Can we can we pray for you two today, tonight, this evening? <laughs> Amen. Mm. You know, I just sense the Lord is saying, son, daughter, I'm drawing you even into a closer sense of my destiny. I see that's the word destiny over your lives. And I sense the Lord is saying, I'm drawing you in even to a greater sense of walking with me. And the Lord says, I'm going to start to expand you. And I'm going to start to train you. And even this day, I'm putting you into the school of my spirit, so God. The Lord says, I'm going to cause you to walk in a greater uh, strength. And uh, a wisdom and a, an ability is coming over both of you this day. The Lord says that you're pregnant with the things of the Spirit. You're pregnant even with the desires that are placed within your heart. The Lord says, I'm going to start to uh, bring about uh, plans. And I see even like a captain in a, in a uh, ship and how he has the plans, the navigating plans. The Lord says, I'm going to cause even that navigating ability. The Lord says, I'm going to cause you to um, navigate over different times and different seasons and hard times. But the Lord says, every hard time you go through, I'm going to make you a stronger and, and a greater ministry. The Lord says, I've called you together. I haven't called you individually, but I've called you together to walk and to work in the war in the realm of the Spirit. The Lord says, many people are going to start to come to the Lord through your words, through your ministry, and even that prophetic gift that I've placed over you. For the Lord says, a prophetic psalmist have I called you to be. The Lord says, I'm going to release even a new sense of my anointing over your life right now. Father, there it is. There's going to release. There it is. There it is right now in Jesus' name. Lord, release that anointing. More, 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 more of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I just thank you that God says pregnant in the spirit and pregnant in the natural. And I know I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm praying over you, Francis. <laughs> this is really weird. <laughs> This is not a creative miracle. But Lord, I just pray for this beautiful couple. You know, when I saw you both, I just saw light coming from out, from within inside you. The Lord says, surely son and daughter are light in the darkness. The Lord says, I've placed you to be a light in the darkness. And the Lord says, sometimes in the future, there'll be times where they've been hard. And sometimes it's like the heavens been brass. But God says, I've called you to be ones that would be the light in the darkness. And I see you crying out in the streets and saying, come, come, hear about the Lord. 
and I see you. You're going to be filled with his oil and you're knocking on the doors and you're saying, you've got to know the Lord Jesus. The Lord says there's a great attraction that it's around you, even in the natural, but the Lord says it's going to increase in the spirit. The Lord said many people are going to start to see you and they're going to ask you questions and they're going to say, what's so different about you? And the Lord says, it's me in you. The Lord says there's not just going to be prosperity in the natural, but in the spirit. And Lord, I just thank you for this precious one. I thank you, Father, for songs of heaven to be within her. Lord, I see her singing over her family. Lord, I see her singing over this nation. The Lord says, even in this nation you will be, but there will come a time, the Lord says, when another nation will come upon your heart. And the Lord says, fire will burn in you. And the Lord says, I will take you to that nation. The Lord says, it will be in the right time, in the right season. But the Lord says, surely, even as those ones that lifted the hands of Moses, God says, I've called you to be ones that would serve, serve in the house of God. And the Lord says, as you lift the hands of others, the Lord says, I'm going to lift your hands. The Lord says, and that day will come where many will come and follow because of Christ in you, the hope of glory. And Lord, I thank you also for that teaching anointing. The Lord says, the word of God is going to open up. And I see like a wind blowing over the word of God. And I see the pages flying open. The Lord says, get ready, daughter, put a pen to paper because messages are going to start to flood out of you, flood out of you. And son, a trumpet you're going to sound in the spirit. And God says, I see you and you're trumpeting. And I see all these people following you, but they're following you only because Christ is in you. Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Is someone here and uh, you have a back condition and, um, you know, we can all be a bit of a sore back now. Then, but I see someone, um, particularly the lower part, uh, almost around the kidney area. But um, who's that person you have? Is that you, Dal? Do you want to come? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Good to see you. Nice Bless to see you, too. Father God, what you reveal, you heal. Lord, I thank you for words of knowledge. Now, right now, Lord, I just release the gift of healing in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. We say be healed in the name of Jesus. Every bit whole. We're tapping into the hem of your garment tonight. Every bit whole. Every bit whole. No pain, no strain right now. Complete healing in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Could your husband come? Could you come? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The Lord says, son and daughter, get ready for my mercies are new every morning. And you're going to know that's a new morning. It's a new dawning. It's not only a new season. It's not only a new chapter, but it's a new era. And God says uh, it's going to be a new volume because you're going to know a new volume in the spirit from filling you up. For you've been ones that have hungered and thirsted after righteousness. You've hungered and thirsted after revival. You've hungered and thirsted after the knowledge of my word. And God says, I'm opening up the floodgates and I'm pouring out a fresh wave. And even that, even that word that was shared by a brother about the wave that came over the 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 the, the puppy dogs in the water there. I just feel like God is bringing a fresh wave of glory. Lord, we just release that wave of glory right now. Robo Sika Bahandai, filled, 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 filled a new volume, a fresh infilling, a fresh infilling. And the Lord says, daughter, you are going to see the travail of your soul and be satisfied. The things that you've been crying out for, you do have the ear of your God. I've heard your prayers even in the night season. And I've come on behalf of your words for even as Daniel prayed and interceded those 21 days. God says there has been a contending, but now there's an ascending and a raising up of a, of a fresh uh, revelation that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And I have gone before you to make the crooked places straight. And you're going to look again. But the word of the Lord is coming to you a second time. And in this new season, you're going to see an unfolding of a pathway, a fresh pathway, a fresh, even a fresh direction is coming round about your lives, says the Lord your God. And don't be concerned because you've not been this way before. 
But as you go forward, you're going to know that there is a, a yes and amen coming out of heaven. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I just sense there's someone here during the song service that has a real burden on their heart. I've just come with a real burden on their heart. I don't believe it's a burden for themselves, but it's a burden for somebody else. Who is that one? A real burden on your heart for somebody. And um, it could be for a few people, because I sense it's like an intercessory thing. But there's a real burden for people. Who is that one? Quickly. Quickly. Is that the lady on the ground? Okay. There's someone else here as well. Just as she gets up sometime. You know, just sense that there's a real burden, and it's really like you're pregnant in the spirit. The Lord says, I'm going to cause you to be one that'll um, fight through battles in the realm of the spirit, fight through difficulties, fight through situations, and touch me, so God. For the Lord says, I'm going to birth miracles, I'm going to birth signs and wonders, I'm going to release my power in a new dimension, even this day. Father, release that anointing for miracles. Even those prayers that she prays, right now, there it is. The, the sense of God is just going to come over your life, and you're going to know, you're going to start to walk in realms. Realms. The Lord says, I'm going to open up realms. I see doorways in front of you, and even as you walk through different doorways, God is going to show you different things. And people, names, faces are going to come. Even countries are going to come before you and the Lord says I'm releasing even a new sense of my presence oh there it is and then my glory is going to come Lord let the glory of God right now just flow over her life in Jesus name Lord right now and that burden that burden Father that burden baptizing the Holy Ghost and power today Lord to carry that gift in Jesus mighty name Father, I just pray favor. You know, as soon as I saw you, I just saw the Lord sees you in the secret place. He sees your heart. And I, I see you sometimes a person that might be in the background, but the Lord says, you're not in the background with me. He says, I see every prayer, every tear. I see you taking off your glasses and I see you kneeling before the Lord. And the Lord says, I hear your prayers. And he said, even as Hannah prayed, God says, I hear your prayers. And he says, the Lord is going to change it. And there's change coming. I just see change coming. You've cried out and the Lord says, change is coming. And Father, I thank you for destiny in that person's life. Father, I thank you for change is coming. And I see chains breaking off. Chains and chains breaking off. Father, I thank you for that in the name of Jesus and I thank you Lord for joy joy comes in the morning I just sense the Lord says those ashes I see ashes and I see such a bowl full of ashes but joy comes in the morning and Lord we thank you that you are a miracle working God and you are the one that will break the chains and take people from prison houses Father God you're the one that opens those doors that no one else can and we thank you for that favor in Jesus name in Jesus' name, that healing of emotions is healing of the heart. Yes, God. Healing. Yes, God. Yes, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh, sorry, it hasn't finished. Just settling. I just sense the Spirit of God is just settling over you right now. Sarah, it's someone. Lord, that burden, Lord, that, that, that burden of the Holy Ghost just come upon her that she would be pregnant, even of the things of the Spirit, even of the souls, souls, souls. I see like a sea of souls around about you. You're like you're pregnant with them, the burden of the lost, even of this generation. And God is putting that burden of this generation upon you and your husband. And the Lord says, I'm going to cause you to cry. Oh, there it is. Cry, even in the realm of the Spirit. And I was just wondering if we could pray for, oh, I saw her, she's not here. Yes. Oh, you want, you want prayer? So sorry. I'll come up, darling. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I absolutely love you. <laughs> I know. 
Who's there? Oh, yeah. Oh, Let the power of God just come. Oh, right now. Right now, Father. That anointing. Oh, that anointing. God, that anointing. Father, that anointing. A breakthrough. Just let it flow. just see the Lord says, I delight in you. I delight in you. I delight in you. And I just see this um, field full of flowers. And the Lord says, I delight in you. And I see you walking in the garden with him. And I see him just refreshing your soul. The Lord says, I'm going to refresh your soul. And sometimes he said, oh, it's just time to just rest now. The Lord says, no, I'm going to refire you. And this is going to be a time of walking in the garden and hearing afresh. And the Lord says, I'm going to speak secrets in that garden to you. The Lord says, I'm going to show you things before they happen. I'm going to wake you in the night season. So Father, I thank you for this precious girl that you've always seen her, Lord. And Lord, you delight in her. Amen. Just let that marinate. Just marinate right now. <laughs> oh, let that sense of it. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. Right now. Right now. Right now. God, take her into a new sense of it. Dreams and visions. Dreams and visions are going to come around about your life going to start to see in the realm of the spirit people are going to I see people coming to you with difficult issues and the wisdom of God is just going to start to flow out of you right now right now Father and that bird oh there it is there it is that burden for the lost is just going to come around about her in Jesus name Amen You just moved. <laughs> wow. You were sitting over there. Sorry, darling. Could you come? Oh, sorry. You're going to have to climb over people. Actually, Joel, why don't you come too? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah just a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe just... Oh, yes, and as you sing to me, I'm singing back, I'm singing over you, I'm surrounding you with songs of deliverance, songs of freedom, songs of joy, songs from the throne room, my daughter, my bride. You're going to sing and see such fruitfulness. You're going to sing and see such breakthrough. And know that I am singing over you. And I am singing through you over my church. And even as you sing, yes, even as you sing, I'll cause a fruitfulness to come. And where you haven't seen the fig tree blossom and you haven't seen all the fruit on the vine as you sing, know the glory, you're going to rise and shine. For like Aaron's rod that budded, get ready to bud forth. It's springtime in the spirit and I will bring you forth like new wine. In this hour, it's a day of my power in your life, in your lives, in your lives, says the Lord your God. For God says, I've brought you thus far by my grace. Get ready, for you're going to know my dunamis power, my dunamis anointing, my dunamis authority. For the Lord says, I've called you, even as ones who would know their God and be strong and do exploits. The Lord says, son, know that, that there is even a new surge to emerge. For God says, I'm increasing the, the, the power 
I'm increasing the voltage. I'm increasing the output. And you're going to find that many things are going to fall into place in a new way. For Even as the word says, I saw Satan fall like lightning. God says you're going to see the lightning strikes of the of the presence of God destroying the work of the enemy, destroying the limitations, destroying those things. For God says, I've called you as a man who would know his God and walk in those high places. For even as Joshua, the high priest, priest, walked into the high places, God says, you're going to be at home in two realms. You're going to be at home even in the in the system and structure of this world, but you're going to be at home in the throne zone, says the Lord your God. And I'm giving you the power to get wealth. And God says, you're going to know what it is to be wealthy, healthy and wise. For wisdom builds the house. Hallelujah. And the Lord says, daughter, there's a new crown of glory coming on your head. There's a new... Uh, 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 almost like a, a, a revelation coming around about your mind that I've made you the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. You're going to rise up and sit upon that throne of Esther. Hallelujah. And just as Esther's Hebrew name was Hadassah, lowly, hidden, myrtle bush, God says, I'm bringing you out of the shadows of old ways of thinking. And it is time to arise and shine. For you're going to minister life to the lifeless and hope to the hopeless. And songs of victory will flow like a river out of your innermost being. Rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Can I just pray for you? Is that all right? You know, just since when I saw you this... Mm, there it is. And I just, oh, there it is. There it is. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, you keep it together. I'm trying to prophesy here. I just saw you like in a big oven. <laughs> and the God says, Lord says, I'm turning up the heat. <laughs> degree by degree. Mm. Degree by degree. <sighs> degree by degree. More. 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 More, 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 more. Filled to overflowing. Oh, there it is. There it is. In a sense, the Lord is saying, daughter, joy is coming. Hilarious joy. Hilarious joy. I said, hilarious joy. Oh, I said, hilarious joy. <laughs> and I say, as I sign the pub, take another drink. Oh, there it is. <laughs> hilarious joy. <laughs> Actually, there's a few more people getting a bit of hilarious joy right now. God, give her a big dose of it right now. There it is. There it is. There it is. A big dose of it right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. In fact, drunk in the Holy Ghost. There it is. Filler. 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 Filled with the Holy Ghost. I said, more. Oh, right now. Phil, 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 Phil,
just have a little add to that, that I saw you and you're opening up a wardrobe and God's giving you new clothes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> And that's not to say, I, I, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. But I do, I do. I see, I see new clothes, and I don't mean because I think you look really nice, but um, you really do. But I just see God is giving you new clothes, and I see with those new clothes is 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 new authority, and um, and I see God taking you into new places, and I see Him putting new shoes on you. And not that the old shoes haven't worked well, and not that the old clothes weren't good, but God says there's a freedom that is coming over your life that you've never known before. It's been there, but God says there's a lightness. And it's almost been like, sometimes it's been like there's been things that have held you back in different areas, and God says it's like I'm going to just snip the cords. Sometimes it's like in different areas running in a, uh, a three-legged race, but God says, no longer daughter. I'm going to cause you to be a runner. And the Lord says, you're going to be light on your feet. And the Lord says, freedom is going to come with you. And as you preach the word of God, I see freedom is going to come and people's lives are going to be broken from shackles that they've had. And the Lord says, as you speak the word, the word is going to become like revelation knowledge to them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I was just wondering if we could just pray for you. I know you're on the little keyboard, but is that okay? <laughs> okay. Okay. Come on. Okay. So what was your name? Ben. Okay. Lord, I just thank you for Ben. You know, I saw you, Ben, and I just saw a huge hook in your mouth. And the Lord says, it doesn't matter where you swim or how far you go. He says, you're destined for me. And the Lord says, surely, son, from a young boy, I just see the call of God on your life. And the Lord says, the woman that you marry is important. The Lord says, I would have you yoked with one that is called to the same ministry as you. The Lord says, even now as you're, you're um, away and you're, you're operating in the Navy, the Lord says, I have a destiny on your life. The Lord says, destiny, 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 destiny. And God says that you're going to be one that knows what it is to walk the narrow path. And I see others just allowing themselves to do this and that. But God says, I've caused you to be one that would be disciplined, not just in the natural, but in the spirit. And God says, I've going to, even as you've known what it is to be fit and discipline your body, the Lord says, I'm going to cause you to be one disciplined in the word of God. And he says, that one that I will bring alongside you will be my choosing. And Father, I thank you that you have got a call and a plan. I thank you for the family that you've put around his life. And the Lord says that that family are like anchors in your life. And I see like lighthouses around your life and they're your family. The Lord says, a sure and steady word I'm going to put in your heart. And the Lord says, you'll be one that would carry the weight of things in the spirit and in the natural. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. I just, just want to add that. And I just sense God is anointing you at this yes. time. And he's anointing you even on that ship and, and, uh, and different things. And it's not just you're doing things in the natural. And it's not just even ministry. God's anointed you for the work that he's given you, even in this time and in this season. The Lord says, I'm going to cause you to learn things in the natural, and you'll know the spiritual application. You're going to be able to know in the warfare in the natural, you're going to see it in the spirit realm. The Lord says, I've made you a warrior. I've made you one that is strong in the natural, but strong in the spirit. The Lord says, I'm going to cause you to stand in this generation and declare my word amongst hard places and difficult times and difficult seasons. The Lord says, my hand is upon you and I'm anointing you even this day. And I'm filling you if up with my spirit and baptizing you afresh, even in my power. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen, amen. I was just going to um, just see uh, three ladies at the back there sitting together. I'm just going to actually grab Lisa. We just want to activate the psalmist anointing over them, just singing over them. No, you don't have to go away, Chris. Oh, sorry. Could you three ladies come out? The ones sitting right at the back there. Yeah. Yeah. And if you could keep playing that just that chord progression, that would be great. This one of Lise. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. What's your name? Vinny. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for Vinny. I just thank you for her precious life. Thank you, Father. 
Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for your peace over Vinny. Father, I thank you for your peace. Father, I thank you for your soft peace over her. I just see the peace of God which passes all understanding. And I just see the Lord would say, even daughter, that even as Hagar, that I see you. I see you, daughter. I see you, daughter. I see you, daughter. I see you. I see you. I see you in the places where no one else sees you. The Lord says that I've seen your past and I'll see your future. And God says, I'm the beginning and the end. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. And Lord, that prayer, that prayer that you've been praying, that prayer that you've been lifting up to me, the Lord says, I'm going to take that prayer and it will be lifted up like an offering. He says, even as Mary, even as Mary cried and wiped the feet of Jesus, he says, your prayers are even tears that wipe my feet. So he says, daughter, look up. Look up, for that's where your salvation comes from. And I see that in the past, you've loved the Lord, but it's like the color has gone. He says, surely, daughter, this is a season of color, a season of life, a season of change, a season of rearranging, a season of taking off old things. Father, I thank you that you are the God that changes things. You are the God that breaks strongholds of the mind, strongholds of our past, strongholds of family traditions. And Father God, I thank you that she's stepping into a new season. And the Lord says, even as we're coming into a season of winter, the Lord says, you're going to start to come into a season of spring. I see a season where God is even cutting off the old and bringing in the new. I just thank you for that in Jesus' name. Thank you. Hallelujah. I hear the Lord say, I'm opening up the windows, the windows of heaven over your life. Opening up the windows, you're going to see a bright light. It's my presence coming around you. So lift up your head, lift up your eyes, lift up your heart. Your God is arising over you. You're going to rise and shine. New light is coming around you. I'm opening up your eyes to see there is so much more that's waiting for you. God says it's a new day dawning. It's a new day dawning. And know that these years, you, that some would say your sunset years are going to be your sunrise years. The Son of God is rising with healing, blessing and breakthrough in His wings. And I'm surrounding you with my wings of love. And you're going to know the wraparound, the, the wraparound love of God. It comes from above, that comes from above. My spirit ascending, my holy dove upon you this night, says the Lord your God. Hallelujah. Thank you. What's your name? Heather. Heather. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just see that the Lord would say to you, surely, Heather, I am that rock that you can stand on. I am that sure tower that you can run into. Lord, I just thank you right now. I just see that God is saying, surely I am that anchor. I am the one that will cause the winds and the waves to be quiet. All the winds and the waves. All those things that rise up in your mind. The Lord says, I'm going to bring peace and healing. I'm going to bring deliverance and healing. All those thoughts that come like a mighty rushing wind. The Lord says, peace like a river is going to flow over your life. Lord, I thank you for peace like a river. The Lord, you're a God that brings peace and stability. Oh God, peace and stability. Father, I thank you that you're going to clothe her. And the Lord says, I love you with an everlasting love. The Lord says, I created you in your mother's womb with those beautiful blue eyes. And I knew your name would be Heather. 
And he says, I've cried over you, my sweet, sweet Heather. He says, I'm going to bring stillness to the storms of your heart. I'm going to speak into those places that have been tormented. I'm going to bring peace, peace. Peace like a river, peace like a river. I'm going to flow over your life afresh. God says, I'm not going to abandon you. Lord says, you know what? If a hundred, if his 99 sheep were there, he would go after you. He would go after you. He says, I love you with an everlasting love. He says, I am the sure tower to run into. I am the one who will change your life. So, Father, right now, that peace of God, which passes all understanding, God, the stability in you, you are her anchor, Father God. Love you, Father. Jesus. Do you just want to come and release that anointing? Just pray for that lady. Just can I just pray for you? Yep. Why don't you just Oh, oh, there it is. Just the heaviness of the Holy Spirit's coming on you right now. There it is. There it is. Fill her, fill her, fill her, fill her, fill her, fill her. Right now, right now, right now. In that sense, you know, a sense of peace. You carry it. And it's a heaviness. But it's God's glory. Doxa. Glory of God. The glory of God. The glory of God. Oh, there it is. And it's going to get heavier. Right now. Heavier. 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 Heavier in the Holy Ghost. And that peace is going to just, it just envelops you. It's like an elegance around about you. As you come into people's sphere, your influence. You're going to carry that elegance, but that's peace. And it's my glory. And in that glory, God's going to release anointings of healing, emotional healing, especially. And even mental illness. I see you praying from people with mental illness and just that peace of God just gently coming out. And there's a calmness nearly feel like there are times when you walk into a situation and just as Jesus stood up in the boat and said, silence, peace be still. And you'll be bring peace in difficult situations, in volatile situations. Lord, the peace of God has just sensed it all over her right now in Jesus' name. I just see also, when I saw you, I saw like a harp. And it was like the Lord was was tuning the harp and he was making beautiful music come out of it. And I just see that it's like the Lord's doing a tune-up in your life. And he's causing you to be one that would have beautiful music that would come out of you. And even in that space of that music and that peace, I see deliverance. I see as you come into that space with him of that, that beautiful um, harp, I see that's your life. And, and it's, it's been a different life and it's been unusual in different areas. But God says, I've created you uniquely to be one that would bring and touch others' lives where other people couldn't. And even as a harp has a unique, unique sound, the Lord said, as you, as you play the music of your life with me inside you, you're going to touch people's lives and you're going to see healing and deliverance. I just thank you, Lord.
Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, thanks for allowing a bit more extra time for ministry. I mean, it was a um, great uh, Christian bit and Lisa to be able to tag along tonight. And, and so thank you, guys. Yeah, praise God. Thank you. And uh, we're going to just share the word fairly briefly because we want you to come back tomorrow. And I'm uh, excited about tomorrow. And um, But uh, thanks, Chris and Lisa. That was, that was excellent. I'd like you to open your Bibles uh, to the book of Kings tonight. And uh, thanks, Pastor Les. Excellent. Wonderful. <laughs> Those words of knowledge that came out, they were very spot on. That was for people, you know, there's someone here that uh, has got someone who is going through something unstable in that in their life. But what was the rest of that word, that God was with them in the midst of it? Oh, yeah, that's right, that word you had. That was, yeah, that was excellent. That was for someone here. And also that one you had two Pastor Liz, that was, I really felt the weight on that, so... Um, if you want someone to agree with you in prayer over those things, make sure at the end when we have opportunity for prayer that you come out. Um, praise God. We're going to go to Second Kings, Second Kings, chapter six. Second Kings, chapter six. Actually, I was going to uh, wait till a bit later, but I really felt for Chris and Lisa to come and join me to pray for Pastor Les and uh, Marina tonight um, before you cause, before you go home. But I thought right now in the anointing, uh, could you guys come? I'd love these guys to pray with me for you. And um, thank you, Lord. might just start but I, I feel like God will give me um, more on Sunday because it'll involve the church but I just father thank you for this precious couple the Lord says son and daughter know that there there is a fresh uh, breakthrough anointing coming around about your lives and even as the as the king struck the ground uh Two and three times, God says, you're going to be, you, you've got that anointing to strike the ground five and six times. For this is a house where many are going to be set free, where many are going to be delivered, where many are going to find that place of destiny, that place of purpose and calling. The Lord says, son and daughter, know that I've called you forth, even as you would call others uh, into the purpose of God. And your destiny is linked to the destiny of many. For this will be a house of destiny. And even as the Josephs gathered, even as the Davids gather and even as the Daniels gather, they're going to be men and women of renown. They're going to be men and women um, even of a calibre that will bring forth not just 30-fold, not just 60-fold, but a 100-fold return because of the spirit of excellence that you carry, that you both carry. And you're not ones that would, would just be half-hearted or slap happy, but you're ones that would have such a spirit of excellence in my house. And God says, no, that I love even most the tenderness, the devotion and the consecration that you have for my house and so the Lord says know that I am I'm building you that you a house I'm building you a house even uh, no not only is it in the natural but a spiritual house and God says you're going to have your own building you're going to have your own base and a place and there will be even um, uh, even greater room for the Lord says this is going to be a new season of, of expansion says the Lord your God mm. and uh, I just want to just really sense that there's a this is a house of the spirit, and that um, I sense the Lord is going to, get, to give both of you uh, greater keys and moving in the realm of the spirit and flowing in that realm in new ways. And uh, I sense that this is going to be a place of the word and of the spirit, and um, God has caused you to be risen up like generals in this house and in my kingdom, so I'm gone. And I'm going to cause you to uh, flow in a different way in the days and the weeks and the months ahead. Mm. The Lord says, I'm releasing, mm. even in you. Oh, there mm. it is. There it is. A new sense of my anointing is coming. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
over you this day. Well, there it is. There it is. And you sense it. New sensitivity. Oh, there. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Oh, right now in the Holy Ghost. And you sensitivity of the Spirit. The Lord says, I'm going to cause you to teach people in the Word. But the Lord says, I made you a man and a woman of faith. Your general's in the army. And the Lord says, I'm going to cause you uh, even to be able to uh, experience realms of the Spirit like never before. And the Lord says, I'm going to teach you how to teach others how to move in the realm of my Spirit. And they're going to release gifts and callings. Gifts and callings. Healings. Get ready for this is going to be a house of miracles. Miracles are going to come from this place in Jesus' name. And there's a real sensitivity over uh, um, your wife. There's a real sensitivity of the spirit. And she can see realms. She can actually see in the spirit over people. Um, she can see uh, in the realm of, of discernment. And um, there's, there's that real sense of, uh, of, of, of mm, sensing climate of what God is doing in the season. Oh, Lord, and I just thank you. You know, I just saw you like a Joseph with a, a man with a coat with many colors. And the Lord says, surely, son, through your life, I've caused many things to happen. And even as Joseph's life, many things happen and he would rise to the top of situations. The Lord says, I'm going to cause you to be a man of the spirit that would have, even as Joseph had in that time when his brothers came and it was a time of famine. God says, I'm going to cause you to be one, what it would be known to even build up in the house of the Lord. It's like he had grain in that time of famine, but God says you're going to have spiritual wealth in the time of famine. And I see people coming to hear and read the word of God, and it's going to be that that's going to be the grain. God says... You are going to be a storeman in the house of God, but a storeman that shares with many. The Lord says divine connections. You know, there's partnerships and there's people that God has for you to meet that you haven't met before. And it's going to open, uh, I see, strategic doors. And even as Phelan said, a new place. As soon as I came in here, I felt God saying, oh, they're going to move into a new place. There's a new place for these guys. And Lord, I thank you that you have a storehouse for so many people, for grain, the grain of life, the bread of life. And I just see over your beautiful wife, Verona, I just see, I just see the Lord says you are a unique one. The Lord says many times I see that you haven't been always understood. But the Lord says you're one that is going to bring the love of God. And through that love, deliverance is going to come. The Lord says, even as you got up today and you started to walk around and talk about the love of God, and that was the beginning of faith, is through love. The Lord says, as you start to walk around, my presence is going to be like a fragrance that touches people like oil. The Lord says, because you are a woman that sits at my feet like Mary, the Lord says, you're going to be one that's going to take people into that secret place. Father, I thank you, Father. I thank you for protection over her life too. I pray the blood of Jesus all over her, Father God, because she's one that was in the Spirit. Father God, I thank you that she would know the presence of angels. I know you do. But Lord, I thank you for that ministering angels around her life. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, guys. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Well, my message is getting shorter and shorter now. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Second Kings chapter 6. I want to just read this passage of Scripture. Uh, quite a prophetic um, passage of Scripture. And in Second Kings chapter 6, it says, The sons of the prophets said to Elisha, See now, the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. Please let us go to the Jordan and let every man take a beam. From there, let us make there a place where we may dwell. So he answered, go. Then one said, please send, uh, send uh, to go with your servants. And he, please consent, sorry, to go with your servants. And he said, I will go. So he went with them. And when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. But as one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. And he cried out, alas, master for it was borrowed and so the man of God said where did it fall and he showed him the place so he cut off a stick and threw it into the water 
and he made the iron uh, float. Therefore, he said, pick it up for yourself. And he reached out his hand and he picked it up and took it. He reached out his hand and took it. Father, I just thank you tonight that every single person here tonight would receive a fresh revelation of your grace, of your supernatural power in this house tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Turn someone next to you and say, it's time for your enlargement. Tell someone else, it's time for you to get bigger. <laughs> I want to just highlight a couple of things in this passage of Scripture, and then we want to be able to, yeah, amen, increase, amen. And uh, so I want to just highlight a couple of things. It says the sons of the prophets came to Elisha, and uh, obviously the, the um, you know, the, the work was flourishing, and they were needing, um, they're needing extra room, and he said, See, now the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. Now that word small is, uh, in some translations, it says a straight place. It means crowded, narrow, or tight. And maybe you feel in a tight place. Maybe you've come for this weekend and, you, and, and you, you, you're, um, you're feeling in a tight place. You're feeling in a crowded place. I want you to know God's got a plan for your enlargement. Amen. And it says that, you know, if I faint in the day of adversity, my capacity is small. And uh, so um, it's time for kingdom advancement. Amen? Amen? And so maybe you've even felt caged up. Jeremiah said the word of the Lord came to him when he was yet contained in the prison. If you feel contained, if you feel constrained, God has got a plan for your enlargement. Amen? Give someone next to you a high five. Glory to God. And so, uh, and so I believe that some of you are in transition to the next level. Amen? Yeah. To the next level. And then they said, um, please, let us go to the Jordan. Now, the Jordan is a very prophetic place. It was a place where the ministry of Jesus started. Amen? There was a place where we saw the Trinity. We saw the Father speaking over Jesus as he got baptized in the Jordan. The Holy Spirit uh, came upon him, and we see the Trinity being manifested in that place. This is my beloved son. The Jordan was a place of mantles. It was where Elisha picked up the mantle of Elijah and smote the waters. God wants to release mantles, amen? He wants to release callings. It was also, you know, uh, a, a place that was the lowest place. It's the lowest river in the world, and sometimes, you know, um, you can feel like you're in a low place, but God is with you in that. Amen. And we know that uh, the Jordan is where Naaman got healed. It's a place that prophetically speaks about healings and miracles and breakthroughs. I believe this conference is all about breakthrough. Amen. It's all about healings. It's all about miracles. And so uh, as they went forward, the Bible says there that each man took a beam. I want to say that, that it's... Um, it's time for every person to take up their role in the house of God. And uh, uh, not only are you called to have, uh, you know, um, calling and authority, uh, you know, as in um, uh, the call of God, but, you know, we're all meant to be supporters, supporters, beam support, hold up the house. And, uh, you know, I heard someone say, ministry is not to entertain the spiritually unemployed. Okay, <laughs> that's a bit nasty, I know. But we're all meant to take up a beam. We're all meant to play our part and, uh, and, and not just be there to be uh, entertained or to be ministered to, but we're, we're called to minister to one another, to be involved in whatever capacity we can. So they each took a beam. The Bible says that uh, they, um, they went forward and, uh, you know, Elisha says, go. And then one of them said, so they asked permission, which was great, they said, come with us. You know, the, the heart of the true heart is those that welcome spiritual oversight. We want you to come. And God is raising up spiritual fathers. I believe this couple are a spiritual father and mother in the spirit. What I've loved about Apostle Les and Verena is that such integrous hearts. There's no hidden agenda. There's no uh, wanting to have the name, the fame and the claim. It's about the to bless and take care of the people of God, minister to, and it's, it's a safe heart to be around. Amen. This is a safe church. And, uh, and so uh, it, 
he said, I will go. I'm going to come with you. And uh, so they, they obviously needed to um, clear a way to build further, to, to go further, to go, to move on. They needed to clear, clear away the trees. God wants to make room for you, amen? He wants you to have more room. He wants you to have greater manifestation of your inheritance. And so there it says that, um, that while they were uh, cutting down the trees and clearing the way, they were working hard, this guy calls out. He says, alas, ma- master, his axe head fell into the water. His, his axe, the iron axe head fell into the water as he's cutting away down the trees. And he says, alas, master, for it was borrowed. And we know we're, we're stewards of all the things that God has given us. But as it fell into the water, you know, um, uh, the, the iron in those days, it was the beginning of the Iron Age. So iron was actually eight times more precious than gold. Praise God. And so it was something very valuable. It was something that he wasn't expecting to happen. He's working hard. You know, the Bible says when the axe is blunt, you have to exert more pressure. Maybe you've come today and you feel like you need a sharpening up in the spirit. I want to say I believe this weekend is all about not only um, sharpening up, but this axe head flew off and fell into the water. I want to say that, um, you know, sometimes we go through things and, and sometimes we can lose these things that are very precious. We can lose hope. We can lose vision. You know, maybe you can look back and say, well, you know, I really felt I had a cutting edge. I was really breaking through. I was really seeing things happen. But, you know, at this stage in life, I've I've lost that. I've lost that great drive I had. I've lost that that passion I had. And and, uh, maybe you're standing over the watering hole of a, disappointed at home experience. Maybe that you would look back and say, well, I, I really felt I was, uh, I was really powering on for God 20 years ago, but I feel like I've lost something of the anointing. I've lost something of the vision I had. I want you to know that God wants to do miracles here tonight. Amen. He wants to do miracles in our life. And maybe you're, whatever it is that you feel, well, I was better back then, or that life was better back then, or I feel like I've lost something maybe you've been through a, you know in your previous years a church split or something and and you can look and stand and look at a watering hole where something was lost and uh will i ever feel that excitement in god will i ever feel that anointing in god and so the alas actually means this is hopeless and sometimes things can look hopeless it can look like what, what can turn this around? What can turn around a marriage? What can turn around a home? And uh, so as, he's, as he cried out, you know, um, it says there that uh, the man of God said, where did it fall? And sometimes we need to actually take stock of, you know, where, where did that passion go? Where'd, what happened with that vision that I had? What happened with that destiny that I was powering on towards and then, Something hijacked it. Something, the axe head flew off. And I want to say tonight, if you feel like you've lost your cutting edge, if you feel like you've lost that gift of God, or, or maybe you've even reached out and it, and it weren't able to flow in it for some reason, I want you to know God wants to release something supernatural. Because the Bible says a man of God, when he was shown where he lost it, it was here, you know, it was here in my journey of hope it was here when I lost vision it was here in my home and my marriage and the Bible said he cut off a stick and he threw it in the water you know the Bible refers to Jesus as the branch of Jesse the stick the branch of Jesse and there are things that only the supernatural power of God can bring forth there are, there are some things that only a move of God, a supernatural release of his miracle working power can turn around that situation. And I'm here to tell you that God's miracle working power is here tonight. Amen. Amen. And as the branch was put into the water, you know, the Bible says that they put a branch in the waters of Mara, the bitter waters, and they became sweet. And as they put the branch in the water, the axe head floated to the surface That is an absolute supernatural, no way, something that's gone to the bottom. Maybe you think that something's bottomed out. 
Just, I can't see God ever restoring that. I can't see God ever turning that around. But I'm here to tell you, His supernatural power is here to bring forth miracle breakthroughs. And as it came forth, the Bible says, the man of God said, pick it up for yourself. I want to say God is breaking passivity off our lives. Because sometimes when we've, lo- we've lost something and we kind of think, well, is this as good as it gets? Well, Life was good 20 years ago. Well, things were happening 10 years ago. Maybe you've called to ministry and for some reason, you know, things uh, took a different turn. But I'm here to tell you that ministry call, that dream, that desire, that passion in your heart, God wants to resurrect that. But we have to reach out and say, yes, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, I can believe, I can believe that, that something that was irreversible and irretrievable tonight can be retrieved in the spirit, can be brought to the surface, can supernaturally manifest and believe for a miracle. Amen. When they would, um, when axe heads uh, were attached to the handle, the Bible says that the um, the, the children of Israel could not go down to the Philistine camp to sharpen their axe heads because um, the Philistines had a lot of weaponry back then. But the way that you made sure that your axe head doesn't fly off the handle, um, <laughs> and if you fly off the handle, you could lose your axe head. <laughs> or could find your, husband, your wife or husband has embedded it in your... No, sorry. <laughs> Um, that you would actually soak that wood with the axe head in oil. And as the uh, wood is soaked up the oil, it grasped the axe head and would come around it firmly. God wants to release a fresh anointing oil over our lives. Amen. That the very things that God wants us to get a handle on, to get a hold of, are going to stay in our lives. So... Where did it fall? We reach out and we pick it up. And I believe God wants some supernatural, fresh, cutting edge. God wants to release supernatural assistance in areas where only he can bring the change. Only he can bring the turnaround. So just want to point out from this passage of Scripture, number one, God has got a plan for your enlargement. If you feel like you're in a tight place, if you feel like, yeah, I need to move forward. Well, God wants your enlarge. Your God has planned for your enlargement. Amen? Amen. There's a new level. Get ready for increase. We are to be people who are in relationship. We are in fellowship. We're relating to spiritual authority. You know, I had uh, someone recently uh, contact me about someone who I'd crossed paths with and had somewhat to do with in a particular previous church. They said, oh, this person says that, uh, you know, you anointed them to be a prophet. You anointed them to do this, that, and the other. And illegal authority can sometimes lay claims that aren't true. And I had to actually say that that person attended a school, but I'm not their spiritual oversight, nor was I ever in that position to speak into their lives. But I referred them to their previous oversight that could be the person that they could uh, talk to. There are a lot of lone rangers that never get anywhere because they abort the very process that was going to bring them out in their destiny. Amen? So I love this house. I love this church because you've got people, you've got pastors that are going to cause you to grow, to mature, and to be able to step into that destiny God's got for you. Amen? And so we're clearing the trees. God has got new ground, new territory. This weekend, I believe you're going to step into new territory. You're going to take new uh, ground. Any ground breakers in the house? Glory to God. Ground takers in the house. Amen. And if you feel like there's something that you've lost, whether it's hope, whether it's a cutting edge, whether it's an anointing, God wants you to know that Jesus... Jesus, the branch of Jesse, wants to supernaturally do something in that situation. It could be your home. It could be 
work. It could be anything. But I want you to know that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. And he can make this season and wants to make this season the best years of your life. The best years of your life. Amen. So could I have the musicians come? I promised I wouldn't be too late tonight. So praise God. Could we just stand right now? Thank you, Lord. Father, I break off every lie of the enemy that the best years are gone, the best days are the old days, that the, that which is lost, that which seems irretrievable. God, I thank you that even now we're in a place of miracles. We're in your house tonight. We're in the place where axe heads flow to the surface. That you bring forth miraculous change, miraculous hope to advance and move forward, to take new ground, to pick up a new cutting edge even this weekend, even tonight as we start this conference. I thank you for a fresh anointing over every person, a fresh cutting edge, a fresh vision. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want you just to lift your hands right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're hovering over our lives, over the water of our lives, over the water of those circumstances, those wells of disappointment, those wells where the Philistines filled them in, those wells that were meant to be wellsprings of life where hope disappeared. But Lord, tonight your spirit is hovering over the face of the waters, hovering over our lives. And Lord, I thank you tonight for miracle breakthroughs, miracle uh, manifestations of purpose and destiny and vision in a fresh way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Right now, if tonight there's an area and you say, Lord, I I need that fresh cutting edge. I need a fresh vision for that area of my life. I need a fresh perspective, a fresh hope for my marriage, a fresh hope for my ministry, a fresh hope for the future. Lord, we break off the lie that the best years have already passed, but we declare tonight the best years are before us. But if that's you tonight, if that's you tonight, and you want to pick up supernaturally that fresh cutting edge in whatever area, in the anointing, the call of God, or maybe you just feel like walking in faithfulness, you're walking in commitment, but the dream died somewhere along the line. The dream died. Just like the Shunammite, she said, I've learned to live amongst my own people. I'm fine. And the prophet said, no, there's a dream in a heart that needs to be resurrected. God wants to resurrect dreams tonight. He wants to resurrect hopes tonight. Release a fresh, new cutting edge. Hallelujah. If that's you, just slip out of your seats right now because God wants to work and release miracles. Miracles in our life. I'm going to ask Chris and Lisa to come and just stand with me. And we would love to just stand in agreement with you tonight. And if that's you, slip out of your seat right now because God wants to release the fresh new cutting edge over people's lives, the fresh anointing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Nothing is irretrievable. Nothing is irreversible. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. Come and see. I have so much more for you and me. 
so much more that you will see as I walk with you tonight into a brand new light that's shining over you that's shining over you and I'm lighting up your path says God I'm lighting up a path and even a runway that you haven't seen before where I am moving you forward and I'm making a way where there is no way and I'm causing even fresh vision to arise and I'm the God who is the way maker and I'm the way maker tonight and even as faith calls those things that be not as though they already are supernatural signs and wonders are being released right now supernatural hope supernatural miracles of change for all your changes are in me and your times are in my hands so get ready to walk out of situations where you felt hemmed in where you felt you were in a tight place get ready to walk out of situations that you thought what could ever change this you're going to walk into places of such freedom you're going to walk into places of such miracle working power but even where you've been in that hemmed in straight and tight place it's now time to advance the break out on the right and on the left. So lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. Make room for a greater manifestation of my miracle working power, my supernatural anointing over your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. going to cause you to have favor over your lives. Father, I just pray favor over this household. I pray favor over this household. I pray favor over the families of this household. I pray favor over the over the couples. I pray, I pray fruitfulness where there's been barrenness, Father, where the heavens have been like brass. I pray, Father God, that you would open the heavens. The Lord your favor would be on this place, Lord. Father God, I thank you for couples coming. You know, I just see there are certain couples that, that are in this place that are going to cause other couples to come. And there's going to be like a ministry of many couples coming and families. And God says, get ready, sons and daughters, because I'm going to increase your net. So, Father, we thank you today, Father, that you are hovering over this place. And the Lord says it is not what it will be. And even as it was in the Old Testament, that there was a hovering over the Spirit, that nothing was as it seemed to be. The Lord says, I'm going to bring things together and it will be good. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for people right now. So I'm just going to get the worship team to just worship.
chance just to stand right now. Thank you, Lord. Just lift your hands. Just lift your hands. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for this weekend. And thank you as we go home and come back refreshed tomorrow. But Lord, I thank you for enlargement, for miracles, and a new cutting edge, a new grace over each and every person in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's let's sing that one time. Eh? just the start. It's just the start. So treasure the things that the Lord has been speaking to you and uh, have a good night's sleep. We'll see you guys in the morning. Bless you all.